Welcome to Northwind 2 episode 16. In this episode I'm going to be talking about acquiring augments, collectibles farming, and how you can use that to build wealth and some resources that you can use to help you find information about that stuff. Like all episodes in this series, this information is going to be really geared toward newer players or maybe players who are a little bit more casual. This is a topic that I've been talking about in my journal, the companion journal for this series, which is linked in my build post, which is linked in every episode video description on YouTube. And that journal, uh, if you're a newer, newer player, is going to have a lot of helpful tips and advice beyond what I'm talking about in the videos. So if you're a newer player, uh, especially, but even if you're not following the build, um, there's great information in there about things like this. So here I am in Giant Hole, and this is one of the sources that you can get augments from. A lot of newer pl players don't realize that this resource is available to you, and you have these vendors here for level 12, 16, 20, and 24 augments, and they have a lot of really great stuff. The level 12 and 16 vendors uh, have a variety of augments that you can purchase using the relics that you get from like rare chests out in the Giant Hole Slayer Zone, as well as the quest chests. And you can see like you just need three of each of the different relics to get like a diamond of a stat plus four. Or you can get some uh, rubies with spell power or like uh, damage dice for your weapon. Uh, protection, resistance, all kinds of really good stuff. Sapphire of Good Luck, one of my favorites. Level 16 version, it does get a little bit more expensive with six of each, but now we got stat plus five, um, higher spell power and weapon damage dice, um, resistance and protection values, and so on and so forth. So if you're not familiar with these guys, take a look at them and um, Make sure that you are aware of, you know, that you can purchase these augments for, for you know, pretty pretty cheaply. And if you're a newer player, you don't have a lot of those relics, but you have maybe you're in a guild where you have some friends that are old timers. A lot of veteran players have just tons of these relics in their bags, and they just, you know, they don't really have <laughs> a need for you know a 500 stack of each of the relics, and they might not mind sliding you a few if you need to get some augments. For the level 20 and 24 vendors, you are going to need the restored relics, and these are the ones that you get from the epic uh, quest chests and epic slayer zone. Rare chests. And then for the level 24 vendor, uh, not only will you need the restored relics, but you also need commendations of heroism. Now the only sources of commendation of heroism in the game are from the Fall of Truth raid and the Caught in the Web raid. However, they have given these out in 10 stacks during the anniversary event. So if you're not a raider and you don't really have the means to do those raids, I mean, I would encourage you to get involved in raids, but if it's just for whatever reason you don't like raiding, you're just not going to do it, uh, definitely look for the Combination of Heroism option in the anniversary event, knowing that you can use those to get augments out here in Giant Hold, lots of really great stuff. In fact, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this is because I've been spending a lot of time lately farming these relics as well as collectibles. Um, so, like for example, when I got to level 16, I wanted to get this Sapphire of False Life 25, which I got here from the level 16 vendor. four, six of each of the relics. And then I also got a Topaz of Evocation, which is a level 16. And, you know, a lot of folks don't know that those, uh, let's see if I can find them here, like the Topaz of Evocation does stack with like everything else. So you definitely, if you've got room for it, you definitely want to get uh, these topazes of evocation and then the greater one which is level 24 or you know for, for whatever spell school is important to you. So I spent a little bit of time out in the slayer zone uh, gathering up relics so that I could get these augments but there are a couple other places that you can get augments which I want to show you. So the next place that you can get some augments from are from Lahar the epic vendor inside the 12. 
and you say I would like to trade tokens for augments. So you can get augments here for tokens of the 12, which you can get from some of the old school epic quests, like the lower level epic ones from older packs give these in the chests. And I'll put a link in the video description for some of my favorite uh, token farming quests if you're interested. If you don't have a routine already, I mentioned some good quick quests that you can do to farm tokens. So look for that in the video description. Um, so these are kind of pricey at 20 tokens each, but you know I want you to know that this this option is available to you. Sapphire of Good Luck Plus Two is just a must-have in my opinion. You can get Sapphire of Heavy Fortification. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, so make sure you know you go through here. Some of them do require greater tokens of the 12. These are the tokens that you get from old school raids like Demon Queen, like Chronoscope, like. Uh, Von 6, for example. So if you're not a raider, these might be a little more hard for, your, <laughs> for you to come by. But you know what? Some of those old school raids are actually pretty easy to solo. Like, you know, if you're level 30, you can solo Epic Demon Queen if uh, normal, if nothing else, more than likely. Um, you can also get hearts. In fact, I just had a question from somebody who was new to reincarnation asking, where do you get these hearts from? And so you can get your heart uh, of wood to heroic reincarnate here for 20 tokens or you get the heart of blood to racial reincarnate here as well. You can also convert your your little uh, fragments of the tokens into whole tokens and you can also convert uh, regular tokens of the 12 or greater tokens of the 12 to regular tokens of the 12 but not vice versa. So Lahar here is a great source of augments especially if you have a ton of those uh, tokens of the 12 laying around uh, if you are an old school player maybe you're coming back after a really long time uh, those used to be called epic uh, dungeon tokens and greater epic dungeon tokens or something anyways they changed them to tokens of the 12 uh, maybe a couple of years ago all right the next source of augments in the game that i wanted to show you is from the monster hunter inside the Hall of Heroes. And so you can use your mysterious remnants that you get from uh, killing champions and there's a whole bunch of augments, actually a lot of other stuff that you can get too, but there's a whole bunch of augments that you can get um, and some of them are pretty reasonably priced. So You can get low level stats and uh, oh, up to plus six for 2,000. That's kind of pricey. But, you know, if you had a lot of remnants and you needed that, this is one source. So definitely take a look at, uh, look through here and know that this resource is available to you. I also wanted to show you that if you go to Google and you type in DDO Augments, you're going to see a couple of links come up right there at the top. And one of the really helpful links... And DDO Wiki, by the way, is the single best source of information, all things DDO. If you don't have this site bookmarked, you need to bookmark it. I use this site every day, and it is totally awesome. Practically any question that you want answered about DDO, the information is here. So this link shows you a, a list of all augments that can be purchased and where. So if you're wondering, hey, is there a, you know, a... You know, where can I get a, a diamond of wisdom plus six? You know, you can just come here and search for, you know, let's see, wisdom plus six here. And uh, well, here I can get one for 2,000 mysterious remnants from the monster hunter. Uh, where else? Here I could get a wisdom plus six from Lahar for 20 tokens. And I could get wisdom plus six from uh, Broag Umber there in Giant Hold. So. Um, you can look through here and see all of the different augments that are purchasable in the game. So this is a really, really nice resource. Up here are the different collectibles traders, and uh, they're also a place that you can get augments from uh, with collectibles. However, when you purchase with collectibles, they give you a random augment, but I do like to use them as to purchase augments from them using astral shards and if you pay for it with an astral shard that you can get whichever one you want and i'll show you what i'm talking about so i earlier in the series i talked about how you can get like moderate fortification and heavy fortification augments from collectibles trader so let's do let's do fortification so a sapphire of heavy fortification oh that's lahar let's see where is he at in the 
Okay, there's light, heavy fortification. Churgen Le Jamal in House D. Let's go take a little visit to that guy. Okay, so I found Churgen. And let's see, show me what you got to trade. So here's a scroll down for some augments, and it shows you, like, uh, let's see, you can get a sapphire of heavy fortification for 12 shards. Or you can get just like a random augment for 5 flowering spore pods, 10 intact spore pods, and 30 brew spore pods. Now, you're, I would encourage you to save your collectibles for um, your crafting, for example. You know, if you, if you just try to get a random augment, you know, who knows which one you're going to get. You'd be lucky to get the one you want, and you're going to waste a bunch of collectibles doing it. But 12 shards is pretty reasonable uh, if you don't have another source to get it. So this is where I typically get, like, my Sapphire Heavy Fortification from, and then there's another co Collectibles Trader that I get my Moderates from for 8 shards. So uh, Collectibles Traders all over the houses and the market and the harbor, you can get a variety of augments from. Okay, back to the Google. This other link is pretty helpful too. So let's say you have some open slots and you're just not really sure what you can put in there. You can go to this link and scroll down. Let's say you know, you're know you level 16 like me. And you can go, oh, what can I put in my yellow slot? Well, uh, look at this here. In yellow slot, I can put 25 elemental resistance, 100 spell points, spell focus, proof against poison or disease, or striding 25%. Or of course, you could put a diamond in a colorless or any colored slot. So it shows you the different color slots and what's available at the different level ranges, all the way up to 28. So this is another resource that's available to you. There are also some named augments. And let's see, here's some of the named augments down below. Don't worry about the old system that's years from years and years ago. So named augments here and like things like the Deconstructor and Diamond of Vitality and Dr Draconic Soul Gem. So you can look at some of these and see what some of the more like rare and named augments are and if you'd be interested in trying to pursue some of those. Uh, a lot of these, are, really these are just available from very specific sources. Some of them um, from events, some of them from specific quests or raids for example. So you can take a look at those, see if those interest you. Alright, next I want to talk about collectibles. I spent a fair bit of time farming collectibles recently, and this has been an important way that I built some wealth during the first series and during this series as well. When I was farming for the uh, giant's platter out of Madness of Crowds, I ended up spending all my shards on rerolls. I, I down to nothing, which is a really bad place to be. <laughs> encourage you to never go below one shard because you need at least one shard to post stuff on the shard exchange. However, I want to show you something here. I was fortunate enough, and every time I talk about this topic, there's always people that comment like, I did not know this was there. So in your monster manual, you may have rewards waiting for you. And the way that you can find that out is you can you know, open up the different um, sections here if you see like a little yellow exclamation point which there is not going to be for me because I went through this recently but I'll just check it was a little while ago so there might be a new reward but you can scroll down here you can go to the different individual entries and if you have like a glowing box around it that's something that you can click on to collect a reward and the reward can be like you know some mysterious remnants or maybe even like a companion certificate or you can even get astral shards. So if you didn't know it was available to you, go through your monster manual meticulously and check out all, see if there's any glowing boxes, click on those. And if you don't have any astral shards, you may have some waiting for you. So I had one astral shard as a reward, thankfully. And then I used that astral shard to post collectibles on the shard exchange to start building my wealth back up. So here I am back to 54 shards. But I have like 20 shards tied up in the shard exchange right now posting stuff. So, And I just, you know, a week or two ago, I was down to zero. So, you know, selling collectibles on the auction house was a great way to build plat 
last life, this life, I've been selling them on the shard exchange to build some shards. And so I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time doing that on this tomb, but I did want to have, you know, I'd, let, I'd be comfortable if I had around 75 shards. That way, you know, if I see an augment or something posted on the shard exchange, I can get it. You know, I don't want to be in a position where I have no shards and it's like, oh, this, you know, there's a meridian fragment for 25 shards. I really want to get that and I don't have it, you know, or something like that. So, okay, so collectibles. Uh, where to start? There's a few things I want to mention. So, selling them on the Shard Exchange. I'm going to pull out the Shard Exchange so you can see what I have posted. I've had luck selling uh, stacks of like 5 and 10 collectibles. 10 if they're common, 5 if they're uncommon. Pretty much just been selling uncommons and commons for like 4 shards each. And they've been just selling moderately well. I'd say, you know, of, of all the ones that I post, about half of them will sell and then I just keep reposting. Um, and I've been, I've had this, like, I have a maximum number of posts right now. Um, but, you know, when I just logged in today, like, I had half of the ones sold. So, in any event, um, you know, it's not a ton of shards. But if you keep doing this, then you can definitely build up a stash of shards. Like, you see, I have 54 shards down there, and I built that up just over the last week or two. And not even playing this, this tune, you know, very seriously. So this is a great way to build up an initial stash of shards. And, you know, if you were the kind of person that likes to farm collectibles, you could definitely, over time, build up a big stash of shards. Collectibles, you know, back in the day used to be kind of a joke. They weren't really used for much of anything, and most of them were pretty much useless. But ever since the new Canis crafting system came on board, collectibles are like one of the most valuable things in the game now. Um, so if you were one of those people that kept getting your collectibles, then you're probably pretty happy about that. A lot of people just stopped picking up their collectibles back in the day because, you know, they were generally useless. And, and then when the new Canis crafting system came on board, they, they were uh, all bummed out because they, they weren't collecting them all those years. So, but a lot of veteran players will have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these collectibles in their bags. All right. So how did I determine which ones I wanted to sell? Well, I, you know, largely just looked at, you know, what did I have larger stacks of? But, you know, at the same time, you know, and I and I don't want to, you know, get myself and put myself in a position where I don't don't have any certain of, you know, some collectibles. So um, let's see. So here, this planar talisman. I got ten, I got twelve of those off the top of my head. I don't know if this is common, uncommon, or rare. And I believe on update forty one, they're actually going to change the red bags, and and you're, they're going to be sorted by common, uncommon, and rare. So you're going to be able to tell very easily just from your bag what they are. But they haven't implemented that yet. So you know you can just go on to you know into your Google and type in DDO planar talisman. All right, and Planar Talisman comes right up. But I also want to show you this other link that came up. This is how to farm the new collectible system efficiently. This is a great write-up that somebody did a couple years ago when the new uh, Kenneth Crafting System came on board. So I encourage you to take a look at this link and read through that. It's walls of text, but it is good information. And definitely, you know, if you haven't seen this before, definitely a good resource to check out. Let's back it up. So planar talisman. So here I can click here on the DDO wiki entry art, uh, article <laughs> entry, and uh, it tells me right here this is a rare infernal essence. So cool, it's a rare. Now how do I know whether or not I want to sell that? I only have 12 of them. Well, let's see. Right down here, look what it says it's used for: unbound shards and just these items. So um, I'm not planning on crafting any unbound stuff, so I can get rid of my planar talismans. On this tune. Let's take a look at another one. What do I got uh, a bit a bit of here? Let's see. I've been selling a lot. Rudy fungus. Ruddy fungus? I don't know. It's one of those two. So let's go back to the Google. DDO Ruddy Fungus. 
boom common fungus okay so I can sell those in stacks of 10 I get 87 of them no problem what are they used for I can look down here for bound shards uh, wizardry fortification insightful bluff haggle jump do 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 nothing I'm too terribly interested in so even if I didn't you know if even if I only had 10 of those I wouldn't mind selling those because I'm not planning on crafting any of that stuff and then here's the unbound stuff it's used for so this is a great resource that's available to you um, in seeing like whether your collectible is common uncommon or rare what it's used for whether or not you'd want to give that up um, like I said I've been selling common stacks pretty well for four shards for ten uncommon stacks four shards for five and those are the quantities that they're used for typically in in uh, crafting recipes sometimes you know like five stacks ten stacks and fifteen stacks sometimes for like commons alright so let's say you're trying to craft something and you need a certain collectible and you don't know where to get it and you want to acquire some and you go to the auction house you're like man this stuff is all crazily overpriced I don't want to pay that I don't even have that kind of flat what do you do well hopefully by now you're familiar with the crafting planner and that's why you know that you need certain collectibles but if you didn't know then you need to bookmark this crafting planner site it's totally awesome I use it all the time now let's see I know that I want to craft a level 18 ring and by the way you know go check out my beginner's guide to Kenneth crafting I'll put a link in the video description uh, where you can watch that and then I also have an advanced guide to Kenneth crafting uh, which talks about how to level efficiency and some topics beyond the beginner's guide so if, if you're very new to Kenneth crafting check those out so I know that I want to make a ring and I know that it wants to I want it to be constitution and I know sheltering and I know that I don't have high enough levels for anything down here because it's like 175 and above so I'm just gonna leave that blank I don't I do not have those kinds of levels uh, okay if you notice for like this constitution shard it says exactly what you need for a bound shard I need 100 essences I need 15 runic parchments and five glass files if I'm making the unbound shard like if I wanted to give it to a friend then I would need uh, some additional ingredients more essences and purified up dragon shard fragments two runic parchments or uh, 30 runic parchments 10 glass files and two executioner beetles but I'm just making this bound stuff I did notice that they recently added this you can have it show just bound or just unbound stuff or both so I'm just going to select bound only um, but if you hover over the ingredient that you need, in this case runic parchment, it says right where to farm it. It says the level range of the quest, 11 to 15, the rarity of the item, it's a common collectible, the type, it comes from a lore, which is like, you know, cabinets and bookshelves, okay, and if, you, if you're not familiar with the different lore types, you can go on wiki and, you know, or read that other entry I, told, I showed you where it says how to farm collectibles efficiently and that explains all that so it tells you you can farm this from the church in the cult on heroic elite or tomb of the unhallowed on heroic normal or grim and barrett on heroic casual or the lords of dust on heroic casual or the eyes of stone on heroic casual or mask of deception on heroic casual so it tells you right where to farm it what about these glass files here Desecrated Temple of Vol, Heroic Casual, Tomb of the Forbidden, Heroic Normal, etc. It's telling you right where to farm these from. Down here, it shows you for like the skull fragments I need for the sheltering shard. That's a level 6 to 10 common arcane. Uh, so I get that Cage Trolls, Heroic Normal, Tomb of the Forbidden, Heroic Casual, Tomb of the Sanguine Heart, Heroic Hard, Tomb of the Unhallowed, Heroic Casual, and Offering of Blood, Heroic Casual. So it's telling you right where to get them from. And actually, I use this. You know, I don't have this stuff memorized. I don't know, like, if I need skull fragments that I can go, you know, to this place or that place. Like, this is what I do. I go here, and I see where to farm it. And I don't even always necessarily know, like, what the best places are. So one thing that I did and that you can do is you can just, you know, pick a quest and pull up the map on the wiki and see how many collectibles it has you know how easy you might think that it would be to farm 
So for example, you know, I just pulled up Tomb of the Sanguine Heart. And here's the DDO wiki entry for Tomb of the Sanguine Heart. And I clicked on the map and see all this information is there. Years ago, people who loved this game got all the maps and all the information of it and put it together on DDO wiki. This stuff is all there. It's already been done for you. The work's already been done. Use this resource. It's totally awesome. And they have this, this great map with a legend that says, look, here where the white dots are are the collectibles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I looked at this map and I said, hey, that's a pretty easy little route that I can pick up nine collectibles in probably just about a minute. So let's go do that. There are so many collectibles in this game that you can get very quickly. So just in this example, I'm going to go do that right now. So here I am, Sanguine Heart. It said to go in on Heroic Heart if I want that particular collectible. You want to make sure you choose the right difficulty because diff different level ranges are going to drop different kinds of collectibles. This is one that I actually spent a little bit of time, probably about 45 minutes farming uh, last night. So here I am way over level, right? This is nothing for me to run through here. And if you got some time on your hands, this is a great thing to do. Like, you know, it's late at night, you don't really, you're feeling antisocial, you just want to be by yourself, you know, you don't have time to run a real quest or whatever. Like, you could just go farm some collectibles, especially if you're trying to build a little bit of wealth. So I just got two. Look, here's another one. Boom. I'm not even doing any work. I got a small Eberron Dragon Shard fragment out of that. That's money right there. Last night I got, you know, in the 45 minutes I spent doing this, I got two medium Eberron Dragon Shard fragments. So hell yeah. I know that I'm going to need True Sing for the for the next part, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit that right now. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to get these two secret doors, and then I'm going to get the hell out of here. There are lots of great quests that you can farm collectibles out of for you know very little effort in some cases you don't have to fight any mobs whatsoever and make sure you pick up your bags too because sometimes you find some really great stuff in those bags so. and those bags by the way are, are like mysterious remnants in the sense that those bags are there for everybody so if you're with a group don't hesitate to pick up the purple bags everybody will be able to pick it up it's not you know it's not the first thing the first person that picks it up so don't worry about being greedy because it's there for everyone so i just got nine collectibles in what like a minute piece of cake right then I just recall out and set it, reset it and do it again how about sinister storage in the harbor I can come in here and quickly get three collectibles and get out without fighting a single mob boom 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 and I'm out of here I just go out I reset it I do it again that's three collectibles what did it take me 20 seconds how about last stand in the red fens? I can come in here and get three collectibles without fighting a single mob. And these ones are always in the same place. And remember, if you're trying to mix up the collectibles you're getting, then you can just do it on different difficulties. Some of the quests, you know, if you do them on different difficulties, you'll get different uh, sets of collectibles. That's two, and then my third one's over here. Boom, I recall out, I reset it, and I go again. So there are lots of great collectibles farms in this game. A lot of them you can do without killing any mobs and very quickly, like I just showed you a few examples, and there are many more. So I showed you how you can determine the rarity of your collectible, but that's gonna be in your bag real soon. I've showed you uh, how you can determine what recipes the collectibles are used in, so you can help determine like, oh, if you only have 10 of them, might that be something you're willing to just go ahead and just give up and sell? And I showed you how you can determine from using the crafting planner 
where you can farm the collectibles that you want. So if you have struggled to build wealth in this game, this is a great way to get started. And if you got time on your hands, you know, a lot of veteran players just, they're sick of, you know, farming for this stuff, or they just don't, a lot of players just don't have time. So if you're willing to spend some time to farm collectibles, there are lots of people that, you know, still two years after the Kenneth Crafting System came on board are still needing collectibles. Collectibles, uh, here we are at the end of 2018, are still really hot and some of the highest value items in the game. And I showed you how you can very easily get some uh, with very little effort. So hopefully that information helps you if you're a little bit newer to it. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube.